Oh yeah. Alrighty guys, starting our SEMA video in the shop with the Lincoln. So this is gonna be interesting. So we have a lot of stuff coming up in the next couple of videos. Uh, we're actually heading to Vegas for SEMA. So it's gonna be a super fun time. We are taking the Lincoln. I think this is just a fitting car. We had this thing in Vegas for the Mint 400. And it was so much fun. This car just belongs in Vegas. It just fits in so well and I like it. So we're gonna be taking this, uh, but I do have to go ahead and put the exhaust on it because I actually ripped it off in the last desert trip. So in the last video you guys saw with the bug, I was flying out on the wash and then I had this thing and I went down a wash and just obliterated the exhaust on like, I don't even know what you would call it, basically like in a wash where the water flows the other way, it dips down. Well, when I jumped off that, I landed on the ground, I hit a boulder, and then I heard a bunch of stuff tumbling down the, the bottom of the car, and I was like, wow, that was a big boulder. It wasn't a boulder, it was my muffler hitting the axle and flying out. So that's gone. So if you find it in Octavia Wells, let me know. <laughs> but that's now gone. So I'll insert a photo, because I used to have it on the car. I had this cool little like teardrop side tip on it, kind of hung over here, but it was so low, and I smashed it on everything. I did it originally for King of the Hammers, and I destroyed it like the first night. So that already told me it wasn't a good idea. Then I broke it twice in Octavia Wells, and then this third time I just ripped the whole thing off completely so it's gone so now we have this so and then this thing is completely stock drivetrain a lot of you guys ask me that the, it's still smogs and everything it's there's nothing illegal about the uh, engine setup on this it's completely stock so it just has this little turn down off the cat and then it comes out to the side so the only thing i'm going to do is hack the turn down part off to where it comes out the side the side exit make it go straight put the little adapter on there put this muffler this black widow little race venom on this is the only other mu muffler i have the shop and then a little turn down tip and we will be done. So just to spare Toby's ears a little bit because he's going to be running in the back of this thing for five hours. So I just want to make it a little bit quieter. So just go straight out, put, push the exhaust down the back of the car instead of towards the door. So we can actually have a conversation in the car. It'll be temporary. I want to put actually up, up and over the axle and go into the trunk area and then put a teardrop tip out the quarter panel. That's what I wanted to do for a while. So I think it kind of gives me an opportunity to do it. So for now, I'm going to weld this in. Oh yeah. Alright, it's all tacked up. I want to hear it. Oh, I like that way better. It's nice and nice and quiet. I don't have to listen to a bunch of garbage now. Okay, so I've had this stupid little thing for a really long time as a joke to put it on like 17 cars ago. So I'm gonna put it on the Lincoln because we're going to Vegas and I'm gonna see if it'll make the drive. This is a tiny wing. Hmm, put it like way up here. <laughs> put it in the back. It's not straight. What do you mean it's not straight? That's definitely crooked. How? That's definitely crooked. That's on there now. Mm, now I can move it. The whole car is crooked, <laughs> Franklin. Does it really matter? No. I don't think it does. <laughs> Until I push this on and then the wing goes flying off and all the paint comes with it. <laughs> Oh, that thing's on there. She's dialed. Look at that. That is speedy speed. She's ready. Uh, yes. Bunch of crappy food. Yeah. Early in the morning. Big race car guy. You know what that means. SEMA week, baby. <laughs> so we got the town car out, ready to rip. It's all cleaned up, ready to go. Put a new mu Black Widow muffler on it. It's a little quieter, so I don't kill Toby in the back seat. And uh, we're all dialed. So let me just kind of. Oh, there goes the battery. There you go. Okay, you won't. Oh. No, no. There you go. <laughs> Happy Christmas. Thank you. <laughs> you gonna be back there? Yeah. <laughs> okay, have fun. <laughs> so yeah, this is the start of our week at SEMA. So last night I put the muffler on, that sounds much better. We got Meg in the passenger seat and we're ready to go rip. So we got like a five hour drive to Vegas. This is probably not the ideal car for the road trip, being it has 456 gears in it. But with the tires, should be able to do like 65, 70, no problem, cruise all the way there. But uh, let's get on the road, I'll catch you guys when we get to Vegas. We're in the high desert somewhere, and uh, yeah, filling up for gas that it loves with our very cheap fuel, as you can see. Beautiful, love it. That's cool. And we had a first casualty, as you can see. I don't know what it is with this car. It just, the world just doesn't want this car to have a grill in it. And every freaking time I hit any sort of, you know, high winds, bumps, any sort of, you know, I guess, 
Any sort of a grit? Oh damn, that was all in the shadow. I don't know what it is with the world, but it just doesn't want this car to have a grill. Any sort of bumps, big jumps, high winds, anything crazy, no matter how I mount this grill in this car, it always falls out. So luckily I caught it and it was kind of wedged and all the zip ties broke but one, but there's like no good way to properly mount this thing. You can see I cut the top of it off. The grill actually normally comes down like another three inches and I cut it off and then slipped it up. So that's kind of why it has that nice tucked look, but I'm definitely gonna have to find another way to mount this where it's a little more permanent or just make a new grill entirely out of metal and put tabs, but uh, yeah, this is gonna go in the car, we'll mount it later. But we're about halfway there. Uh, I got like another two hours to go and uh, should we keep on trucking? So I'm gonna throw this at Toby and then uh, yeah, should be good. See how far, how much gas we use. So from San Diego to where we're at now, the halfway point, this thing used eight gallons. So I'm actually gonna do the mileage to see what kind of fuel mileage we're getting. But yeah, not bad. Yeah. Make Chrysler. Thank you. Okay, so in 120 miles from my shop right now, it used exactly nine gallons. I thought I was getting really good fuel mileage. Apparently, I I was wrong. <laughs> Beautiful. <laughs> well, not a very fuel efficient car. I thought it was. Is that right? 120 miles divided by nine. Yep, that's right. Okay, so we're getting 13.3 miles a gallon the whole way on the highway. So your lifted Crown Vic is not a good daily driver. Who would have thunk? Not me. All right, let's keep going. All righty, so finally made it. So we're gonna walk like two miles to the start just so I can get my pass. And I have a couple meetings I gotta do and walk around, but uh, yeah, we're here, so it's pretty fun. So I wanna catch you guys up when we get to the actual venue and uh, hopefully I'll show you guys some cool stuff around and see what we find, so it should be pretty fun. All right. <laughs> Legit, not legit. <laughs> <laughs> so we got media. I have to run to a meeting real quick, so I'm gonna get back to you guys after that. But we're here, we're starting it, so it should be fun. All right guys, so we just cruised over to the Ford Performance booth. We've got a bunch of really rad crate engines over there, which is super sick. A bunch of really rad packages that are gonna be coming out next year in 2024, so check this out. So the one that definitely caught my eye was this one, and this is the FP800S. So this is a basically bolt-on package that when you order the new Mustang, you can apply this. You have an 800 horsepower Whipple supercharger right on top. That is just super, super rad. All the parts and bells and whistles to make it work, and obviously the Pirelli tires, the Brembo brakes, all of these things, and on top of that, it's a six-speed which is even cooler so you have all this stuff on top and so this is really rad I like the aero package it's got the carbon on it the four performance badges on it and this is just a concept they might change and tweak little things here and there about this car but this is rad I like it a lot so they're definitely speaking to their enthusiasts and they know what they want by bringing a car out like this we always talked about the diehard enthusiast wants the V8 and the manual all the cool V8 noises and all the cool attributes going along with that this thing has amazing Pirelli tires, big Rembo brakes, big blower, and a manual. So this is speaking to me very, very big. I like this thing a lot. So that would be a rad daily to have. So I believe these are gonna come out early 2024. There's a bunch of other ones from the Bronco to the Ranger and a couple others as well. But uh, it's definitely cool to see. So it's definitely rad to see in person. So yeah, but my friends left me, so I gotta go find them. But there's a bunch of other rad stuff to do here. So let's get into it. Don't look at that. When I mean, you have to be at a place in 5.30 and it says you're gonna be there in 5.27. You go the speed limit. We've made it to security guard. Look at that, very nice. Let's see what this baby can do. <laughs> ah! Very nice. Oh, joke's on you guys, we're driving a bunch of Crown Vicks. Oh, bet. Even better. I wouldn't even be mad to be honest. <laughs> All right, so we made it. It's a little NASCAR track like Las Vegas Motor Speedway. We're gonna drive some cup cars. That'll be fun. So we're gonna go get dressed up as Oompa Loompas in little one-piece suits and uh, see where this goes. <laughs> wow, I can't wait to be edumacated and <laughs> double re Oh, wow. <laughs> oh man, slow down. There's only so much heat I can take in one day. Hey, Marty. I'm gonna go train somebody. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect, I'm a race car driver now. <laughs> my, my ancestors used to wear these. <laughs> I don't think I'm allowed to bring a camera in the car, but I'll try to get a shot. How was that? That was 
Yeah, they supposed to rev a little higher. Yeah, I know. They stopped at five grand. Well, he's like, rev it to five, and it's at 40. He's like, touch, 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 and he's like, stop it. And I'm like, it doesn't go to five. <laughs> I was at five, like the second lap, they put me at five. I thought it was still fun though, right? Yeah, it was fun. They just need to turn them up to 72. Dude, yeah, I was like, like, you'd be like, okay, go up 200 more RPM. I'm like, what? And I lift off. I'm like, damn, I want to keep going. <laughs> How was it? I, I asked the guy in the pit. Those are only 400 horsepower. They're 602 crate motors. That's okay. It's that's 400 horsepower. That's kind of what I figured. That's, that's about what it feels, feels like. like yeah. Toby stalled it. Yeah, good job, buddy. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 This is good. Well, following crate ground. Went the wrong way. Now I gotta walk all the way back. All the way back to the <laughs> expecting the immediate 360 in like third gear and I was like oh boy here we go <laughs> these things are so much fun so a massive shout out to the guys over at Optima they have a killer skid pad every, every single year at SEMA they always have an amazing time you have autocross you got the, the ultimate street car series that they're doing drift cars you have Chris Malorty and his uh, pro light over there with Megan and you can see her she's gonna have a wild ride she doesn't know what she's in for so it's gonna be pretty fun I want you to go do her thing but uh, yeah a ton of fun out here at SEMA so make it out here fast he was going he whips oh, yeah. it around i was like damn look at the rear tire dude he went all out for her nice hell yeah man that was sick that was good <laughs> good stuff yeah, yeah no it's got so much weight transfer that it just folds <laughs> to the front of it yeah oh yeah none of this ls stuff dude look at that Burn. Burn. straight proud. from the factory just proud for it <laughs> she works i thought i blown it up like six times like i'm not it, it hit 275 though. 
It's a 302, you can't blow it up. 275 degrees. Dude, we hit 280 in the Mustang. I was wondering why you're doing a cool down lap. <laughs> oh, it's still, I pulled in here at 260 still. It's pissed. <laughs> it's all right, it's a Ford, it'll be fine. <laughs> you hear it, you turn it off. It's like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> That's so badass, dude. No, it does good though. I mean, it, we do nothing to this thing. It just yeah. keeps running. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah, Those are the best cool. ones. Yeah. Big swap with a F100 body on a slick side body. This is so perfect. So check it out. So big 80 mil turbo. Big 80 mil turbo. LS intercooler. All the goods. Crown big chassis. ATP setup. Viking coilover system up front. 4L80. And then look, dude, the whole interior's got this roll bar in it. Door bars. Got a bunch of cool metal work in it. Holly dash. Check out the cage. Goes through the back of the cab. Drops down. Stock Crown Vic chassis has a tank back here. Took the stock tank out and went and put a cell right here, so he's got a cell. Now he's got a whole racing cell right there. The 85 has weight in the back of the chassis, training coolers, all the stuff for the 85 and the, the boost controllers and stuff. Dude, look at this fender pull. Pulled it out so you can get a 315 in the back of a slick. That is the sickest looking fender. You could be a Chevy, Ford, Dodge guy, I don't care. Just right now we have mm, so nice. That looks sick. And you could daily this damn thing. That's so badass. So I do have a Vic. A lot of you guys have been seeing it. It is manual swapped. It's a badass car. It's basically a ready to go drift car. And we do have a video coming on it soon. But I think this is the move for that car. So when you see it, keep that in mind. But let's keep walking around. This is sick. We're just kind of running around the, uh, checking out some of the stuff in Central Hall. And they got all the cool retro stuff from uh, the RC10 days. So if you don't know, actually, <laughs> one of my old past life hobbies before I got into cars was RC cars. I was huge and I still have all of them. And you can actually see it all the old retro <laughs> stuff from the RC10. They're coming out with a clear kit version that you guys can actually buy. Not only that, this is the original uh, gold pan RC10 and they made a scale model of it, which is sick. So you can see it has a billet arm to match the shape of the original arm that was on the car. And dude, this is crazy seeing a full scale of this thing. It's quite literally a full scale, all the way down to the rear arm and the tires. I mean, that is something else for sure. So it's definitely cool to see. But uh, that's a highlight for my trip for sure. I like that. All right, guys, this is probably, well, not probably, this is my main reason for being here is this car right here. So this is a 1964 Galaxy 500. As you guys know, I have two. But this one's way cooler. Chris did an amazing job at building what, in my eyes, is like the best version of this car. And so I figured there's, if there's any car that I want to showcase at the show and share with you guys because you've seen so much Galaxy stuff on my, my channel here, this is what we should showcase here at SEMA. So this is my number one pick for this show is this car. And I figured what better way to show off the car than by talking to Chris, the guy that built it. So Chris, I guess introduce yourself and tell me about this. Yeah, so my name is Chris Ashton. I've been building video games for 25 years. And then I always had a love for cars yeah. and I was building them in my own garage. But they were really successful. So two years ago, I started a shop. Now we're building the cars that we want to build and we're hoping to be able to sell them so we can keep building more cool cars. That's cool. And so these are the first two cars that our shop has built. We just finished them. Got them running and driving last weekend, which was amazing and yeah. emotional for the team. Yeah. We're just stoked that we got them done in time to bring them out here and kind of show the world, yeah. you know, yeah, what, you guys what we're do. about. If you guys probably, if, unless you're living under a rock, last year at SEMA you had the GT40 that you built as well as, uh, was the Mustang the same year or was that the previous year? 2019 for the Mustang. Mustang, so that was the first one. But you built those solo out of your garage. Yeah. So these are serialized to your shop. So this is the first build and then the second build out of the rough Yeah, shop. just having a team now means yeah. that we can really execute to a level that I dreamt of you know so these are much higher quality than what I've been able to build before yeah super proud of it yeah and it looks amazing and the other thing I got to point out team of five people this isn't a team of 105 people so it's not you don't need a like, crazy amount of people but it's guys that all have the same mindset that can make this so I just need to point out some of the crazy mods obviously you flared the fenders out so this is a stock fender. we flared it because I mean, these are huge. These are uh, 325 20s. We can go lock to lock with those, wow. you know, without rubbing the fenders. So yeah. fender flares there, the louvers on top to vent yeah. some of the turbulent air out. Inside the engine compartment, 
the hot air comes in, and then we need to get rid of that. Yeah. And we don't necessarily want to go through the transmission tunnel. So we've got a compartment, an aluminum panel in here that diverts it into the fenders. And so oh, okay. these are actually... So that's to pull air out. That's to pull air out of the engine bay, hot air out of the engine bay. Okay. That's when, when the car's moving. Okay. Yeah, well, before we go too far into the back of the car, I noticed the front, is that, that was two front bumpers cut in half welded together. Like exactly, yeah. <laughs> so Look, cool. we, yeah, we yeah, laid one, we took the original yeah. one, we laid it on the ground yeah. upside down, and I was like, if this thing is flat on the ground, we can cut it in half. Yeah. and we can put two together. So the original bumpers, for anybody who doesn't know, the top looks like that, but then the bottom comes yeah. down like a big truck bumper. They're yeah. huge. And actually, we kind of keep that shape with the spoiler that's in black underneath it. Take off the tops of them, turn one upside down, weld it together. So cool. And that gives you enough room to obviously make the one-off splitter that's on this thing. Yep. And it all works together beautifully. So you can pop this open and, and see just how far, because you can see the teardrop is a lot further back than it would normally be. Right. Yeah, so, so we pushed the engine back 10 inches, and the uh, the issue with that is that we couldn't open the hood because the carburetor is so far back. Look at that. I mean, there was a oh, I didn't even notice your masters right there. That's really nice. Spot. And then in the hood, we have uh, vents to vent the hot air out if we're doing slow speed, like autocross and stuff, or a smaller track. Uh, so I did, I did flat panels that are curved to match the hood and yeah. still are camouflaged. Oh really? They go right in place of those, yeah. Oh, so but these look way, way cooler. Yeah. So I, I keep these in most of the time. I get you. And so this is a totally different chassis. So you didn't use any of the stock Galaxy chassis whatsoever. No. It's not good. <laughs> it sucks. <laughs> it hangs really low, it's heavy, it's poorly yeah. welded. And the car's body on frame. Yes. Yeah, so now it's a unibody. Yeah. Ron Sutton, who's who's built race cars, raced race cars, owned race car teams. Yeah. Uh, that's been his entire life and career. Uh, he designed the chassis. so. He sent us blueprints, and then we build off of those blueprints. So we built the entire chassis. We built it all outside of the car. We raised the body with like a crane. Yeah. We set it on the body. We, we tacked in the roll cage, and then we lifted the body back off. We fully welded everything. Yeah. And then at, once we were happy with everything, the body comes back down and then gets welded to the whole chassis. Yeah. And it's channeled over the frame, so it's tucked It up. is. So yeah. the bottom of those rockers goes straight to belly pan. The whole yeah. car is dead flat across yeah. the bottom. There's a couple NACA ducts in the transmission tunnel oh, cool. because the exhaust goes through right next to the transmission. Yeah. It's all tightly packaged, yeah. so it will get hot. Yeah. So we get a little bit of air coming in there, and then it vents out the back, and that's why we've got holes and stuff in the back of the yeah, car. Yeah, I did notice the whole back of the car is pretty much open. But the other nice thing is how you blended all of the sheet metal work around the tube structure on the car. Because obviously you need to make tube structure to mount the fenders and everything else. And your hood, that looks like a stock hood hinge almost. It's a Mustang, actually. It's from the from this car. The 67, yeah. What was the inspiration for pulling the hood forward? Mostly I would imagine because the motor is so far back. Yeah, we had to, there's not enough room to have an air filter yeah. on top of the carburetor because yeah. it's also, the motor actually gets lifted up a little bit. Even though it's got a dry sump pan and those are low profile. Yeah. Transmission, everything has to be above oh, the yeah. belly pan. Yeah. So the whole thing comes up. So we decided to turn the, the teardrop scoop into an air box. Oh, I see so it's filtered. It's yeah. got a filter in it. And so this needed to come up into the filter. So it had to overhang the cowl a little bit. Yeah. So it couldn't open rearwards because okay. of the bulge. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and we have we have all this stuff up front, which is a little bit. Um, it's hard to fit a hinge in here, right? Yeah, yeah. So it just it's one of those things. You got to solve a problem. It just so happens, like really, the with the hood on, and we hinged it this way. And the first time we opened it up, we're like, that's so cool. It's yeah. like so we're inspired by the galaxies that raced in Europe. Yeah. And here we are, reverse. Yeah, opening the hood, which is kind of, it feels like a yeah. little bit of European. It feels like it's supposed to be that way. Yeah, that's cool. And yeah, coming down this thing, not stock door handles. <laughs> also, no trim on the car. Normally, it would have had a big, big strip all the way down it. Yeah, because we did the front fender flares, like, there really wasn't a way to. Just the trim. You can't even just cut it off and use it. Yeah, it rolls over like big. So, we, we had some trim. We were going to use the. The trim from here back yeah. on the front actually fits really nice. But we put the trim on and it's it's kind of a weird thing where I don't know, sometimes a car just tells you what it wants and what yeah. it doesn't want. We put yeah. the trim up there and we're like, eh, I kinda like it better without it. Yeah. You know, at this point, because of the fender flares and the camo paint and yeah. stuff, it's just it was like another element that just didn't need to be there. Yeah. No, I, I feel that for sure. And I like this.
this this uh, just yeah. a quick so the door handles uh, off of an international scout so I have a 85 international scout like a diesel something in the back lot that yeah. I want to build at some point and I noticed the hatch the rear hatch was a push button and I'm a big fan of like the early like the push button Panteras yeah I just like the simplicity like instead of the big bulky handle yeah. and I don't like the poppers because batteries and remotes yeah. and all that stuff and so I was like let's just do a simple push button thing so these are actually original international scout buttons that's left cool. and right that we that we bought online and like that put them in yeah that's cool yeah and then no post so this is uh obviously the hard top so there's nothing here and then everything for the window channel is like smooth and one piece drip rails are obviously gone right that i noticed right away and this whole mechanism so how do you does this window roll up and down no so what uh what we wound up doing here was we have a channel for yeah. the rear window these are plexi the yeah. front and rear glass is glass but the side door the doors are uh, plexi so when you, if you can open the door and then we have a piece that slides in and it just locks into this channel. Oh, I see. So you literally just slip it back. Yeah. Got it. That's cool. But it looks, you know, for, for slow speed stuff and for car cruises and stuff, like it's, it's so cool just to have that huge, All big just open, open yeah. space. Yep, I agree. Such a big car. Yeah. Yeah, again, and then the paneling blended into with the inside structure of the body. Um, normally this would go all the way back to here. So right. You kind of tinned all this in because there's coolers and all sorts of stuff underneath. Yeah, there. big. the big thing being the decoupled three link suspension oh, in the yeah. rear. Yeah. So yeah. if you're going to do the decoupled three link, then you have to attach the arm yeah. up high yeah. and low with two different shocks. And so that means you've got to you've got to basically cool. box in where the rear seat was and just make room for it. Yeah. This is like a Senna style seat too. You have a lot going on in the interior. It's kind of crazy to want to highlight. So similar like stock-ish style dash with like race aesthetic stuff all over it. Yeah, I mean crazy. Obviously this is <laughs> nothing here in stock. So normally there's a trim piece that goes all up in here. That's all been shaped on the bottom. And you can actually see how nice and low the floor is. So you see normally the floor on these cars is kind of up high to get room for the frame rail. So this one's got a whole tunnel. and. And you have an, even have a spot for your helmet back there. It's kind of cool too. Because you are going to track this car. It's like supposed to be like a, like a road race style car. Right. Or something that someone could take to the track. Yeah, so we, we, we thought we had this big space now. Yeah. And we are like, it's kind of awkward. Yeah. So like, is there anything cool we can do with it? Like make a storage cubby or something? Yeah. And then we're like, what if we put your helmet back there? Yeah. And then we're like, what if we put a, a fan in there and dry your helmet when, when <laughs> you're not racing? So there is actually there's a fan in there. A 300 CFM fan, fan in there that, that you just turn it. on that uh, will blow your helmet the sweat dry in your helmet i did not know that that's good yeah. cool. and then uh what are the gauges in it because i really like that yellow style it's almost like a little no that's cool and even has a handbrake and i noticed that a little while ago so full blown right. race car yeah and you can see the it even has a little handbrake in there you see that make this is probably the when i saw you do this i was kind of laughing because i have a galaxy on 20s and you cannot get the rear tire off this car right <laughs> i have to pull the shocks pull the axle halfway out the car and this essentially fixes that issue. So did, is this a fiberglass piece or is this metal? It's metal. So you made that out of metal? Yeah, so I I made it just like I would make the front fender flare. Yeah. So it was all one piece first. Okay. And then I cut it out. And then I had to make a backing panel. Oh, so you made it and, in the car? Yeah. And then cut it out of the car. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I see. So it all used to be one piece. Yeah. But so you still have to pull this fender off to get because these are 21s. Right? These are 21. Yeah, they're big. Yeah, yeah, even my 18 race tires, I still have to pull that panel off. So the issue I the issue I ran into was like basically had to be cut up to here. Yeah. To get the 18s out when it was on air jacks. Yep. But I I actually mopped it up. I photoshopped it putting this body line up yeah. that high. Yeah. And it just looked weird. It was like man, that extra like three inches yeah really matter it did yeah yeah, yeah so oh, I so I just made it a removable piece instead I see yeah no and it looks good I think it, it works well because it came up a little bit from the factory but yeah. like when you I've seen like renderings of ones that are just full radius cut it's like it, it looks yeah weird, you know? and honestly in hindsight like it would have been with these size of wheels and tires it, it might have looked too funky before yeah. if you'd have been able to keep the stock yeah. set up yeah if you're starting to cut the lug nuts off then it just looks slammed like right. all the time yeah so but yeah, then you even have like this is almost reminds me of, like what you see on a charger or like any sort of like Cobra SE. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, we wanted to. We had to figure out where to do the gas filler, and the issue is the front 
so big and it's yeah. taken up with yeah. this ducting that yeah. like getting a fuel, a get, you know, going to the gas station and leaning that far over to fill up the, yeah. the tank was going to be an issue. So mounting the fuel tank or the fuel filler in the side of the fender there just works a lot better. Yeah, I get that. And yeah, it's kind of hard to see, but there's, this is all open to the ground, obviously, down there. Almost belly pan. Or even besides the belly pan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But yeah, all made tubs and then ended up welding the hinge to the tub. It's, gosh, the amount of metal work. I'm like sticking my head in here. It's like, wow, I've done all this before, but not that this much. This is crazy. Because <laughs> <laughs> I've done tubs too, but that is a whole nother level. Look how wide those are. And then you said it's what, a 325 on the back? 325s uh, for the street tires. Yeah. And that's just because we can't get 335s and 21s for some reason. Yeah. The 18s are 330. It's a 3 335 square setup wow. uh, on the on the slicks. That's sick. The Galaxy's had the Ford text on the back, yeah. so we wanted to keep that. Uh, I, I spread them out so the F would line up with the yellow stripe and stuff up front, yeah. and with that vertical thing. And then it felt like the cool thing about this car was that it was a really, really big car doing stuff that it's not supposed to do. Like yeah. it's not a big Galaxy shouldn't be really like this thing will put down lap times that will put you know compete yeah. with supercars yeah. and stuff. Hundred percent. It's kind of a middle finger to what the universe expects of it, you know. Yeah. So that's where we made the toe <laughs> hook. The hook yeah. We made the toe hook at U, and then the F is the yellow, and so you kind of get the F U, you know. It's just I the middle finger it. to the, to the rest <laughs> of the so. Yeah, and it, it also the cutout for where you put the holes. There would have been a trim piece that sits over this. That's almost that same shape. Yeah, we actually put the trim piece up there and traced it. And oh that's yeah. The okay. hole that we cut out, yeah, and yeah, then we, we marked where the gallon. C500 emblem would have been in yeah. the trim, yeah. and we yeah. put it back. I like that. I yeah. Like that a lot. Like yeah. That. And even the taillights, by the way, you gotta, you can't miss these. These have been fully reworked to actually look like the afterburner. Yeah. Which is kind of crazy. Yeah. And um, I wish we could show them on. They look so crazy when they're on. But yeah. yeah. Those are. Um, I built those, designed them in the computer, and then 3D printed uh, all the pieces. The shiny bit 3D printed in aluminum and oh, then wow. polished. Wow. And then the other two pieces are 3D printed in or 3D printed to make molds from yeah. and then cast in resin. Wow. Yeah, that's insane. Yeah, those are one off. That's definitely one. Of, that was one of my favorite parts. When yeah. I saw those, I was like, that's what that car I, needs. For some reason, I think the Mustang's the first, this Mustang, the 67, is the first car I've not spent like a stupid amount of time on <laughs> headlights or taillights. Yeah, but it's like the focal point, it works. And then yeah. how this is all Frenched in and it's all one piece because you extended this out, the lower part of the, of the, of the rear of the car. Right? Basically what we did was mold in the rear bumper. Yeah. Like take the same shape of the rear bumper yeah. and the as if it got fit like yeah. super flush. Yeah, because there's a body. huge diffuser under this thing. Yeah, and yeah, then of course it. we have to cut it out in order to uh, fit the rear. And you can't forget like the craftsmanship underneath the trunk to get all this stuff molded. It's not just cut out. It's all yeah, the, the uh, first locks. So those, uh, those uh, those uh, surrounds around the exhaust are also 3D printed, and then they, I took them and had them anodized black. So it's aluminum. It is. Oh, okay. Yeah. That's that would make sense to have some sort of metal around the exhaust. That would, if it was any sort of yeah, composite. Try to just dissipate some of the heat that's going to come off of those. But what I like is everything you've done has a, like a purpose and a reason. And it all is functional in some way, shape, or form. And yeah, the flush mounted glass too. That's also like, looks really good. So normally they're set down, they have a huge trim piece that goes around and getting clips up to fit them is always a pain. So I like that. That's something I probably do on mine as well. The other thing is this is painted. This is not a wrap. A lot of guys probably think it's wrapped. Uh, oh, <laughs> The guys that painted this thing is that's yeah. something that's really good. Yeah, I actually did um, I did all the masking and everything oh, yeah. myself and that's then good. yeah, I worked with a worked with um, Auto Addiction OC. Yeah. Those guys did the paintwork on it and they and those guys put in the hours, let me tell you. And they were not pleased with the uh, all the speed holes and stuff. Yeah. Just the in, and the intricacy of oh, the, sand it all, yeah. the cage and everything on the inside was brutal. Yeah. They were excited to do it and uh, yeah, it looks fantastic. I think everybody fell in love with the project. Yeah, and what's the inspiration for the livery or the livery on the car? The uh, World War II, they would camouflage the battleships. Oh, so I think it was a uh, Midway or something was uh, was camouflaged, and I and it was a cool like gray and white diagonal pattern. Yeah, and so I tried to do that with the car 
So you can see it's, it's uh, diagonal across the whole car yeah. and it's leaned forward, which is like really makes it kind yeah. of aggressive. Yeah, either way, I just had to showcase this car. Thank you a bunch yeah. for your time. Yeah, yeah. A lot. appreciate it. Yeah, this is something. So definitely might pick for CEO if I had one, but it makes me want to go and finish mine. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, thank you That's a bunch. Good. Yeah. That is blowing my mind. I think <laughs> big camera guy. <laughs> but yeah, massive thank you to Chris uh, for taking the time to share with that. That is an amazing car. The amount of hours and craftsmanship that have gone into that car are unreal. So that's the aesthetic that I, I shoot for. That's the kind of styling that I like. That is in my opinion what a Galaxy should be. Uh, that's a blank canvas and you do what you want with it and I think he hit the nail right on the head. So I'll, put, I'll probably have his tag up before and after so definitely go check out his stuff. He has a bunch of other crazy builds. There was a Mustang in the background that we didn't even touch on because just to, just due to time. Um, you can check out his page and see all the stuff on that as well. This, this is sick. So we're gonna have to, ah, gosh, I gotta get on my car. So it's coming, I promise. <laughs> but man, that, something else. amazing cars in a lot of different classes and we're out here shooting some photos of these cars because these things just look so awesome doing what they do so had to come check them all out oh my dream car bro ah very nice very nice very nice, very nice. Very nice. Very nice. yeah like a lot Look at these pro photo guys over here <laughs> this Miata's freaking ripping bro little abandoned spot uh, taking some photos of this thing so I just hope you guys want to enjoy the video there's a lot of information piled into this video and a lot it might seem a little choppy but it is filmed over a week we've been out here for a long time and we're finally on our way back but I hope you guys wanted to enjoy some of the, the stuff that Chris Ashton had to say that's an amazing build it's a year and a half long build and he has a ton of stuff that he's changed on the car and it was stuff that I wanted to point out so I hope you guys wanted to appreciate that as much as I did I'll put his tag up you definitely recommend following his stuff uh, he does an amazing job they're all built in his shop and uh, it just gives me a lot of motivation for mine. So we are gonna head back home, get back on that car. Uh, there's a lot of stuff in the background you haven't seen with the Galaxy, so there'll be updates very soon. And uh, with that being said, I hope you guys wanna enjoy today's video. Drop a like if you did enjoy it. Let me do think down in the comments below, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Later, guys.